When one isn't born with money flying out their ass, one must make do with what they are given. For whatever reason, God made me a lower class human being, so I gotta do what we common folk do best, and that is, ball on a budget. And what's my budget you ask? Free 99. Doing these challenge videos takes some time depending on how hard it is and whether or not my computer decides to heat up and explode. Because of this, I want to give you guys some filler episodes before we get on to what's canon in this anime. Now as you all know, Steam has a lot of free games. Some, admittedly, a lot more concerning than others. With so many games to choose from, you can imagine how overwhelmed I get trying to just pick one. I needed help, and thankfully, there's one place I know of where I could find even the answers to the meaning of life. Reddit. It's in this habitat where you find the smartest creatures that inhabit this planet. One of them, thankfully, had exactly what I was looking for. This amazing, beautiful person created a roulette filled with Steam games. I set the settings to only show free games and gave it a spin. Well, looks like Frontier Runner is our lucky contestant. Let's go check it out. Worst game I have ever played. Within 50 minutes, the game crashed three times. Okay. Based on the reviews alone and just how the game looks, I'm uh, I'm not really expecting much. But ladies and gentlemen, we aren't here to judge a book by its cover. We're here to simply ball in a budget. So let's get to it. So, it's the middle of the 22nd century, and mankind invents the warp drive. Hooray! Using this new technology, humanity decides to launch two fully equipped research spaceships on a mission to find more habitable planets suitable for life. Okay, so I know it sounds like it's some sort of college project, but if I'm being honest, this game is pretty goddamn cool. Basically, humans were sent into space to find more planets to inhabit since they ruined Earth by fucking too much and overpopulated it. Now since they'll be up there for quite some time, they were placed in a freezer and locked up until a planet was found. This is where the robots on the ship take control. Imagine WALL-E, but more serious and a lot more depressing. Since all the humans were basically frozen, it was the robots turn to control the ship, clean it up, and take care of us. Suddenly something crazy happens and boom, we crash land on a random planet, everyone dies except for yours truly since I'm just built differently. Now I'm basically bleeding out the mouth, both my lungs got punctured and my neck broke but the robots are doing a mighty fine job by keeping me alive. Years passed and the robots decided to build a facility in order to try and fix our ship to get back on course. Unfortunately a couple of pirate cucks decided it's time for some shenanigans and attacked the facility. The robots put me on a small lander ship and blasted me off the planet in hopes of keeping me alive. To my regret, I did survive this. And with that all said, this is when we get a look at what planet we've been on for all these years. Planet LA-77, where the gravity is normal and the weather do indeed be class A. Anyways, upon re-entering the planet, you get to see the layout of what planet LA-77 really looks like. And it's like this for all the different planets you can discover throughout the game. This is one of the features I was fond of since almost every planet, for the most part, had a different layout. Some had mountains, some had snow, and some were just, I, I don't know. You'll spend your time in this game mostly exploring the Milky Way galaxy, entering various star systems with each color representing what you will find in these planets. Now I may be colorblind or just downright stupid, but it says here that blue white star systems are hot. So you can imagine the look on my face when I flew into a reddish orange star system only to find out that the planet inside of it was filled with explosives because I just died as soon as I entered it. I'm not too sure what happened but it instantly killed me. Now these phenomenons when you just die out of nowhere happen a lot more times than I would like it to. Like I go around these different planets collecting resources to upgrade my ship, I'm a happy jolly camper and then out of nowhere a random planet just squeezes my balls the second I go into it. If there's one thing I adopted very very quickly in this game was the art of quick saving every time before I entered a planet. 
You never know what's inside of the planet until you enter it, and I don't know about you, but dying instantly from god knows what and having to restart the whole game because of it doesn't seem very fun to me. If you're going to try this game out, I can't stress it enough to quicksave every goddamn time you can. So anyways, as I mentioned before, you go around different planets collecting materials in order to upgrade your ship. Now different planets house different materials. Some planets may only carry some diamonds, and some may only carry iron, and some are just empty and losers. So yeah, as long as you ignore the fact that you're basically dooming anyone who lives on that planet by harvesting all their resources, then you should be good. Upon doing so, you can head over to the shipyard and sell any materials you've just found. Me, of course, being the smart man I never was, I sold my materials one by one because I didn't realize that you could sell them in bulk. With the money you earned, you can either buy new weapons, some shield, a new hull, sensors, and a reactor, and trust me, you will need to upgrade your ship because believe it or not, you're not alone in this Milky Way. Until this point, the only signs of life I saw was on planet Craigslist and it was this blue alien called Booga. I immediately took him as hostile and opened fire on it without even thinking twice. There was also a dinosaur that didn't understand what extinction was so I taught it to him the hard way. Now I was just cruising around having some fun when out of nowhere a black orb started to follow me around. These orbs initiate mini boss battles. Despite what you are seeing, it actually does get pretty intense, especially around the later portions of the game where I had to face off against like three different ships. Shortly after this little encounter, I came across this piece of garbage who basically called me pussy. Now I can't have someone like that disrespecting me, so naturally I challenged him to a duel. I, I didn't win this duel. It's after this defeat that I realized I needed to get smarter, stronger, and faster. I went planet after planet, devouring every possible resource that I could find, sucking the planet dry, basically leaving it to die. If any life form stood in my way, which I prayed they didn't, I have no choice but to commit complete extinction of said life form. It was without a doubt a rough journey. I even had pirates try to take all my loot, but all they took home was nothing because I fucking killed them. The money was racking up, the upgrades were getting juicier. My life was getting better, so I went back to that talking pile of garbage and showed him who really has the balls in this relationship. Once the dirty deed was done, I kept collecting, I kept exploring, but then I got to a point where I just had no idea what to do. The only thing my quest log said was journey back to Earth. Ah, thank you. I'll go do that now I guess. Although I found exploring each planet and collecting its resources fun, I really did want an objective. And thankfully, the game pulled through. You see, in the local intergalactic pub, I met an alcoholic detective who gave me certain tasks to do in exchange for money, or better yet, progress. One of these quests even got me out the ship and doing some cardio for a change. I was in charge of discovering what was killing the crops of a certain planet. As it turns out, it was this reptilian just being a dickhead. Now since I didn't want him to rip me in half, I offered him to join my crew. Not so much because I was scared, but more so because I've always wanted a pet lizard in real life. Plus, in space, if things ever got too crazy, I can always use him as a distraction and save my own life. He said he would join, but I'd have to bring him back some sort of egg, or, or like a bug, I don't exactly remember what it was. But anyways, I went off in search for it. Along the way, I met a lot of interesting characters that this game has to offer. A lot of them were downright hideous to look at, and most of them were assholes to me just because I was a human. Most of the time, I was racially profiled in space, but there were some that did respect me. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to complete these quests, and let me tell you something, it gets confusing. You see, I never really kept track of what planets I've already been to, and which planets I haven't. Because of this, I found myself revisiting the same planet over and over again and not really getting anywhere. As you can imagine, this got very frustrating since I also forgot which of these planets kill you instantly. But anyways, I came across something that looked like progress to me, but it ended up being a gangbang. A gangbang that I handled like a champ. You see, the enemies in this game are basically only a threat if they come in groups. Other than that, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty goddamn easy to overpower them. I'm pretty sure if you just pop the controller on top of a pregnant woman, the fetus could overtake these goddamn enemies. Oh, by the way, remember those little black orbs from before that I said initiate the boss battles? Yeah, they, they don't hop off your yak. 
the second I leave some planet, they were there, ready to just stick to me every single time. I tried to escape, but they just follow you and follow you and it's just, it got so annoying. But you know, it's alright I guess, because with every battle, I got stronger and eventually, I got pretty powerful if I do say myself. With all this power, with all these battles I was accumulating, I felt like I was getting somewhere. But then, I just got lost. I explored every planet, I completed every mission, well, the ones I knew how to do at least, and now there was just nothing to do. I even bought an excavator tool in order to dig up these relics that I found in some planets, but it, it led to nothing. I then found out that certain shields protect you from certain climates on different planets. So in my mind, I'm guessing that, you know, if I buy the fire shield, I'd be protected from the heat of some of the planets, right? Psych. Think again, dumbass. Now I'll be honest, I don't know what I did, but out of nowhere, upon exiting this star system, a light appeared. It was an alien asking for help with defeating this really menacing looking ship. I mean, the guy who flies this goddamn machine must be packing some heat under his belt. His ego must be out the roof. This is the equivalent of seeing a charger driving down on the highway, sounding like he's going 300 miles per hour, when in reality, he's only pushing 50. Me, being the good guy that I was, I helped him out and showed the man that I am also packing some heat. The alien thanked me and then told me to meet him at 133-127. This battle I just did opened up a new star system that wasn't there before. I thought I was about to get jumped, but then the man gave me warp drivers to use in order to leave this sector and make it to sector 2. I was excited. Finally, I get to explore a new galaxy. Unfortunately, that was about it. The next sector was never made. This game left me with some blue balls that I don't think I'll ever recover from. But that's okay, because now although this game had its bugs, there's a nice little charm it has to it. Something about it I found rather pleasing. Whoever made this game clearly had some fun with it, and I'm glad I got to discover it. Keep up the good work. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw, and I will see you guys on the next episode of No Money, No Problem.